Hello. Hello from everywhere across the world. Good morning, good afternoon, good night. Welcome to My Data Online 2022. My name is Tem Ropponen, uh, and I'll be hosting your session. I'll be hosting many of the sessions today, uh, and I've taken part in organizing this conference. It's wonderful for us to gather here virtually um, during these times. Um, we've uh, just heard today that uh, that some of our speakers are are still uh, suffering from COVID-19. So definitely the pandemic is not over, even if we, we, we thought so. I will take you soon through uh, some practicals and some of the program uh, before we get into the content. But very first, I would like to invite on stage Vivi Lahtenoja, who is the chair of the board of My Data Global. Vivi, uh, welcome on stage and welcome to My Data Online 2022. Hello, um, hello from Helsinki to, to everywhere that you are. Um, thank you for the introduction, Demo. Um, my name is Vivi Lahtenoja, and um, it is, it's been my honor to, to serve as the chair of the board for My Data Global this year. And um, this, this uh, online event is a wonderful, wonderful occasion for, as, as Demo mentioned, for, for the global My Data community really to, to come together and share, share our insights and our, our energy uh, with each other as, as we plow through, as, as Demo mentioned, still some somewhat difficult times in, in this world. Now, what I thought I would do uh, is just very briefly um, introduce you to, to my data. Um, I know we have many, many um, of you here that are attending uh, my data events for the first time. Um, and so I thought it would be it would be a good idea to just um, give you a very, very brief overview of, of what it is that uh, my data stands for. So let me just uh, share my screen. Here we go. And um, I'm, I'm sure someone will tell me if you can't see my screen. Um, so the, the My Data Vision uh, is really um, at the core of it that people should be in control of the data about themselves. And the My Data approach aims at strengthening digital human rights while opening new opportunities for businesses to develop innovative personal data-based services built on mutual trust. And why, why is it that we, we kind of have this vision, this is what we work for? Um, the, the kind of planetary, the macro goal for, for my data really is fair, sustainable and prosperous digital societies through this human centric approach to personal data. This human centric approach is, is something uh, that enables people to get value from their data and set the agenda on how it's used, while at the same time, for organizations, the ethical use of data is always the most attractive option. So this approach really kind of combines the two, two key aspects of, of personal data that we see in the world today. On the one hand, the need for very strong data protection um, and, and kind of protection from, from harm that can be caused through personal data. And at the same time, there's an enormous amount of potential for, for innovation and new kinds of services and making people's lives better through personal data. And these two do not need to be mutually exclusive. Um, and the point of my data is precisely that if we take the human centric approach, we can have both. The my data 
uh, vision is is in much more detail, um, but still quite briefly uh, described in the My Data Declaration, and you can see it here. And this is this is really my my call to action to you: is you if you are inspired today by what you hear, what you see, what you experience, um, do go to mydata.org/declaration and sign sign the declaration um, and, and join the community of thousands who are who are working for this fair, sustainable and prosperous digital society. And one of the things that the declaration describes are the three the, the three shifts that we want to see happening in the world. I won't go into details on these, um, but the basic idea is that especially here in, in, the, in Europe, uh, in the EU, with the GDPR and other legislation, and increasingly around the world, we're beginning to see formal rights um, being established about personal data. And what we really need to do is make sure that those rights are actionable, that we can actually um, use them to, to our benefit as people, as communities, as groups. The, the second point relates to what I was saying a little bit earlier is that in addition to strong data protection, we must go for data empowerment, really to, to give people the sense of, of, um, of, of empowerment, of kind of control over what happens with, with personal data that relates to them and that they can use it for, for the purposes that are, are good for them. And then third, um, as a necessary kind of enabler of these two, we also need to shift from closed to open ecosystems. We all know the problems with walled gardens and, and monopolies um, that are the status quo today. Um, and what we as a My Data community are, are pushing for is shifting more towards open and ecosystemic kinds of um, dealing with personal data. And there's lots more in the declaration. Do check it out um, as soon as you have the chance. And then finally, um, just a couple of words about My Data Global, um, the organization behind uh, this wonderful event and, and that I've had the chance to, to chair this year. Uh, we're an international nonprofit organization. Um, our headquarters are here in Helsinki in Finland, where I am right now. Uh, we were founded in late 2018. And uh, at the moment, we have over 500 members, including over 100 organizations from over 50 countries. There are also 30 local hubs on six continents, as well as emerging international thematic groups. And of course, we are here because we are the organizer of the leading personal data conference. Now, that was what I wanted to, to share um, with you today, um, and I'll hand over back to Temu to, to take us through the rest of the session. Thank you. Thank you very much, Vivi, for that introduction. And uh, I'd just like to note that uh, just based on your input, uh, about one half of the attendees are attending the MyData conferences for the, for the first time. Uh, or my data events for the first time, and that's that's wonderful uh, uh, to have new people, not not only uh, uh, the uh, the old ones visiting. Uh, and again, uh, um, it's nice this time that we are able to access uh, and reach perhaps those people who we have not been able to always reach uh, reach before. Uh, and yes, indeed, we are just about to celebrate uh, our our fourth anniversary, so uh, so you can send your congratulatory remarks by by the 15th of, uh, of November. Uh, um, it was actually from October 11th to November 15th that uh, that we had a kind of a period of, of, of starting starting the organization. So we're happy to come uh, come to this to this uh, this stage. Let me walk through a few uh, practical details. Uh, I see many you already active on the on the chat uh thank you for that uh but there are a few other things i would like to just us to be uh to be aware of so first of all uh just noting on the headline global solutions for a fair data economy and that is really important for us the global aspect as is in the name we're very well aware that it's not 
uh, uh, in any particular region, any particular country, any particular city, uh, that the shift towards a fair data economy is happening. It's happening globally. Uh, and especially given that during this summer, this summer conference, uh, we were not able to get everybody from Asia, everybody from the Americas, still due to the COVID restrictions. It's even more important that we get everybody from all around uh, uh, together. We have here today uh, over 30 presenters, uh, and I'd like to thank all the presenters because they are all doing, contributing their time, they're contributing their expertise uh, free of charge. Uh, and, and are able to join sometimes at very, very uh, uh, curious uh, uh, times uh, for, for some, of the, some of the speakers. In addition to these 30 plus speakers, we actually have over 15 pitches also. So all in all, the amount of people on stage will be around 50, 50 plus, which is, which is of course nice. I imagine you have looked at the, at the schedule and have some, uh, some insight into that. I will not dive deep into everything, but I will note that we we indeed have these uh, these uh, plenaries, these shared sessions, this opening. Uh, then we split into basically two different types of sessions. The ones on the red are use cases, uh, a, a practical, uh, more practical, more business oriented, perhaps, uh, whereas the uh, the light blue. Uh, um, sessions here uh, um, on your right um, are ones on thought leadership and policy. Uh, and I would like to also encourage you to make, make use of the time, the two hours in between. We have sessions there that are more networking oriented. And that is one of the key, key fundamentals that we strive for, people getting connected. We want to be a globally recognized connector of expertise, connecting you uh, experts from all around the world. I want to thank those people uh, who have decided to pay for the ticket. Uh, this is something that we are uh, uh, experimenting with, having a voluntary uh, uh, paid ticket. Uh, and we estimated that perhaps 5% uh, of the attendees at, 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 at most might opt for this, uh, this uh, 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 option. Uh, and we're very thankful that, uh, that indeed, um, as of today, we have nearly 20 people who have, who have decided to pay, uh, pay for the tickets. We hope we can deliver value for that. I'd also like to thank our partners uh, who are contributing uh, to the production of this, uh, of this virtual event. So thank you. Thank you for your kind, kind contributions as well. Without you, we could not make it uh, happen. All the partners have booths um, and some of them with many different discussion topics. So I'd highly recommend that you, uh, you have a look and engage with our, with our partners during the course of this day. Uh, and indeed, we have quite a bit of time uh, um, to make that happen. And still, um, I'd just like to make, uh, make sure we know a couple of ground rules uh, and ground uh, thoughts. We do have a uh, code of conduct. First of all, we want to make this a lively, uh, safe place for debate, discussions, sometimes disagreeing, sometimes agreeing. Let's be nice to each other. Let's be curious. Uh, we hope you make use of the chat uh, also in case of problems. Uh, we hope you understand that we often operate in, uh, in our language, which is not our first uh, language. That makes sometimes things uh, a little bit difficult to understand. We, we are coming from different disciplines, so we encourage uh, the use of simple language where, where possible. Uh, and please feel free to reach out in, uh, in case of any, any questions. All right. Vivi alluded to some of the things, uh, things we want to, to uh, um, also uh, have happen. happen. We, Vivi mentioned we are a membership-based organization. Many of our members are here. Uh, Vivi mentioned the My Data Declaration. We encourage you to sign that. 
uh, and otherwise join our, our, our activities. But of course, we are here uh, today uh, uh, mainly to be active, to be curious, to get connected, and to have fun. Uh, and thank you, Silla, and thank you others for posting those uh, links on, uh, on the chat. I would just say that uh, in, in addition to experimenting with, uh, uh, with the tickets, we are also experimenting with uh, uh, donations. Uh, so uh, uh, if you want to support our community activities, um, there is an option for that as well. Uh, and with that, I would actually like to thank uh, particularly the IO Foundation, who is helping us with, uh, with the tech support and putting in a lot of effort to make this happen uh, uh, free of charge. So thank you, IO Foundation. Okay, um, but that's it for the starters. Uh, and um, it's now time to get into the program. Uh, so let me introduce here our first keynote, uh, Kohei Kurihara uh, from, uh, from the Privacy by Design Lab co-founder. And with Kohei, uh, we've kind of uh, um, discussed a little bit occasionally on uh, on Twitter and on social media, but unfortunately we've never had a chance to really discuss uh, uh, or get to know each other in detail. So it's with great pleasure that I, uh, I welcome now Kohei here uh, uh, to introduce uh, uh, himself from Privacy by Design Lab, not only to, to, to us at my data, but the whole community. So uh, welcome Kohei and looking forward to your talk. Yeah, thank you for inviting me. It's uh, very precious to meet with you as well as been a uh, very thankful to all the organizers on this great conference and also the attendees to visit this precious time to spare with me. So my name is Gohei. Uh, I'm working on the Privacy by Design Lab. Uh, we established it two years ago. So we believe the Privacy by Design is a great concept across to the my data. So uh, I'd like to share my presentation with you uh, because the uh, privacy by design is essential uh, to achieve uh, our goals. Okay, you can see that. Okay. Okay, let me start it. Uh, first of all, again, I appreciate it to all the attendees to spare my time with me. So uh, today's my presentation is focusing on the designing the privacy into practice because the privacy is core, essential, fundamental for all of us in the digital age. I think for the business should consider how they can implement it, the privacy into the design. So this is a critical concept for all of us. So my background is I used to work in the blockchain space. Right now is moved to the privacy by design because privacy is fundamental for the data economy. Even the blockchain has been a widespread in the digital age, but it's a necessary to consider the data, who owns the data, how to protect the data. So the privacy is the core essence to achieve this goal. That's why they moved to this field and working so hard to um, spread the privacy by design concept into the business practice. The privacy by design lab is uh, the one of the organization in, in Japan. So we focus in on the intersections, the data uh, in between the many stakeholders to create a new value. The privacy by design is very important to achieve uh, this concept uh, to the practice. So we try to reach the global stakeholders to create new ecosystem uh, for the privacy-based activity. Uh, so this is a critical approach uh, with all the stakeholders to come into one place. So we used to collaborate with some of the organization right now then we will be organized our own conference as well. So please uh, check out this information. We will update it more. So uh, I would like to move with you the main topics today. I want to share with you the four pillars of the agenda, the privacy by design and for the business and the practice. Then I'm going to try to share 
the sum of the practice of the privacy by design. Now, first of all, uh, let's go into the first agenda. Uh, so I'd like to share the origination of the privacy by design with you. The privacy by design is essential concept uh, proposed by the Dr. Kabekian in 2009, which has been accepted by the privacy commissioners in the workshop. This is a very important notice in the industries because some of the um, data protection regulation is been influenced by the privacy by design and concept because privacy is the fundamental rights for all of us, not just for the consumers, but also the company owners, the business practitioners. So we should consider what is the privacy by design. Privacy by design is not just only for the technology, but also the operational system processes and the management structures. So when we consider the privacy by design, we need to mix those of the elements to create a new value. This is a very important notice. And I also, I delivered one important message. Uh, this is the concept of the win-win. The internet business is win and lose model at this moment. The big tech company is gaining of the, our personal data. Then they use it for their profit in the business. However, for the privacy period, we need to change this kind of the framework to be more win-win based approach. So this is a core principle of the privacy by design. This is the era of the winner takes all model. However, for the privacy by design, we can achieve the win-win model. Winner takes means the specific business is gaining their position against of the minority business. So this is not the equivalent for all the challenges. So we should change this kind of the model based on the concept of the privacy. The privacy by design has a certain principle. The proactive and the active, preventive, not remedial. This is a very important. It is the same. Please imagine for the healthcare, it should be preventive. It's not the reactive. This is the same concept of the privacy because the privacy is the fundamental actions. It's the same of our health maintenance. Privacy is a default. Default is a very important. This is the fundamental infrastructures. So it should be in default, not just with additional actions. Embedded into design. Design is key principle to create new products and services. So the privacy should be inclusive of the process to design of the products. Positive sum and zero sum. We should become a positive to apply privacy. It's not just been a negative. It's a forward, it's not futures. So this is a critical as well. The end to end. Our digital infrastructure is been a widespread. We can easy to access everywhere on the internet. So the business owner should pay attention to start from the end. That's very important to design of the all infrastructures. And the visibility, the consumers should be able to check whether this data has been used, what is the purpose is for. That is the kind of proportionate in each of them. Respect for the privacy. Privacy is the fundamental rights, which is the same of the humans. We should respect each other to achieve the win-win concept. Those three principles is in a fundamental identity to create out the privacy by design. So this concept has been a widespread over 30 countries, 38 languages worldwide. So this been a translated in niche interpretations and become a core concept into the each national identity. The privacy by design was started from to modernize of the 
privacy enhancing technology, but those concepts have been a component of the three peers. IT system, physical design, accountable for business. So we need to include the three concepts at once to achieve the privacy by design. So what does the privacy by design need with the business? As I mentioned on the last slide, for the business part, accountable is very important for your business practice to achieve the privacy into the practice. The origin of the account, account means accompanied. It's a Latin from that. The account means is obligation, expectation, account giving. It's just from the trading of the banking. It's a kind of the accounting. So the company should be taken the responsible, the same of the accounting before that we have been experienced. So the same things we can learn for the digital economy as well. About the privacy law, it became a lot. The representative is in a European data protection regulation. This is one of the first starters and that influences the other jurisdiction, such as in Japan, such as in Canada, such as in Brazil right now, or other Asian region as well. The 83% of the respondents to privacy law is positive in accordance with the research of the Cisco. So the privacy law is basic underlinings of the privacy fundamental to apply for the business. So the few winner model is shifting to the multi stakeholders. It is a consumer. It is for the business partners. It is the government. This is very important to achieve accountability. So those stakeholders should be inclusive to design of the privacy into their practice. So this is a very important principle for your business. I'd like to share the, some of the practical use case. So this example is from Japan. This is the one of my original country. The Japan is the different positions of the privacy control in compared to the Western countries. The sum of the Western country is been a more aggressive to control the data. But the other countries such as in Japan or at Asian region has a trend try to share their data, but we need a trust. This is a very important that this is a different, even we call it the privacy. So this is a very important for the business perspective to know before just to start any of the practice. Why does it happen? Japan, we have some of the history. This is a one of the important picture. It was the Edo period, it's almost 200 years ago, we are trying to rely on the specific intermediates to give them uh, information. Then this intermediate is supporting to give them uh, any good products or the services. So this is a relationship. They cross very each other regardless of their own relationship. So this kind of business model has been established from Japanese cultures. The one of the inter important animation this year. It's a very famous. This animation is representative of the Japanese Showa period, which was been almost over 20 years ago. So we have experienced this kind of the scene everywhere. Uh, she is the host of this family. Then she asked this man to give uh, her own demands. Then he is coming every time. So this is a very interesting thing. Then also he sometimes come into the house without telling her own, his own profile. So this is a kind of the communications. Once we trusted each other, we share the more and more the information. This is a very interesting Japanese style of the privacy disclosures. So we need a reliable intermediate. So this model is quite a different from the Western country. So this intermediate should be trusted. So this model is with a new kind of the elements to 
representative of Japan or other Asian countries' trend、uh, of the privacy. So, I want to share the two parts of the practical example consortium model, enterprise model. As a consortium model, this is a one of the projects in Japan to achieve the goal to find and discover the any problems in your city. That each citizen can post on the mobile phone and the any.、Um, City、um, council can easy to find what the problems happen in your city. I'll share the few videos here. Yeah, thank you for watching. This is a very interesting video.、Uh, sorry. So, you can download this video、uh, in accordance with your locations. For example, as I'm living in one of the Japanese c i t y once you download it, you can find the, any object, then you can easy to take the photos, then uploading to register your names and address in the email. Then you can choose. Uh, to receive the notification under the Apple、uh, system. The privacy, we just provide the location, contact info, and a user contents. And a user can be easy to opt out if you don't want to store this information on your app. On a business model,、uh, it's、uh, different from the traditional one. They make a consortium, then secretariat. Is organizing、um, this ecosystem. The local government is become a membership to use this application. Then they pay this for the service. And the local government is checking their own jurisdictions. The any post has been a discovery, is there any issues that happen? s The system is alerting、uh, this government to find any specific. Uh, notice, then local government can easy to find these problems. Why this kind of the project is h a p p e n i s in the local government is in hectic and a shortage of the resources to provide the supportive service for the citizens. So the citizens can start spontaneous to post their own,、um, to clean up their own city. So this is a very voluntary approach、uh, and designing to protect the Consumer rights. So, this is a very interesting one. The other one is an enterprise model. This is the one project i t s in STAR. Then, this project is based on the blockchain. Then, the student is provided more and more their certifications、uh, through these services. So, I want to share the one video as well. STAR Project Hajimaru. 個人が情報をコントロールする未来に向けて、企業と大学が連携し、ソサエティ 5.0 時代における学生のキャリア形成、成長を支援するスタープロジェクトが始まります。スタープロジェクトは、慶応義塾大学フィンテックセンターが主管し、慶応義塾大学の教授が参画しています。今日の個人情報管理体制や、企業と学生のマッチングシステムは、個人情報の流出や性利用など多くの問題の発生を許しています。スタープロジェクトはこれらの問題を解消し
、個人情報の安全性、透明性、管理可能性を実現するブロックチェーンを使ったシステムです。ブロックチェーンのメリットは、暗号化されたデータを多数のコンピュータに分散して管理するため、改ざんを阻止し、安全かつ公平な情報の保管、流通や管理を保障し、運用コストも低いことです。学生と企業、社会にも多くのメリットをもたらすスタープロジェクト。今後は規模を拡大し、全国、そして世界の大学生、企業が活用するソサエティ 5.0 時代の個人データの社会インフラプラットフォームを目指します。個人情報を学生の手に、私たち自身の手に取り戻そう。スタープロジェクト。So, this is a little bit similar concept of the My Data to get back the ownership of the data to the students. So, this is a very important to control. It's not to be undermined by the, any specific enterprise.、Uh, to achieve this goal, security and transparency is very important. The mutual benefit is well because the student is. Reluctant to provide the data without any benefit, even the privacy has been preserved. So, this kind of the project is supporting the student to give them an incentive to provide the tokens to increase the price if this token is become a variable. So, this is a very natural process. And accurate matchmaking if the student is providing more and more the data on the basis of the trust relationship, the great matchmaking is achieved. So, this is a good、um, relationship, the win win approach in between the students and companies. So, privacy preserving is very important because Japan has a very big scandal、uh, in some years ago, the selling the students' data to the company without a consent. So, there is a very important notice, especially for the young students. Lastly, I want to compile this, some of the importance of the privacy by design. To achieve this goal, mindset is critical because the privacy by design is accountable for your business. And the communications, the most stakeholders need to commit on these new visions. So, the communication is the one of the factor to achieve this goal. The collaboration, collaboration is a key part of the making to synergize in each of them. The winner takes all model to become a win win model. The win win means to enhance in each other. So, this is the change of the business mindset, not just winner takes. It's a kind of win win, it's very important. The most stakeholders, it's no longer the business itself, it's the business partners, consumer, government to collaborate with each other. The stakeholder communication is the key part of the element to achieve the privacy by design. Lastly, to enhance the new business ideas, we should collaborate it to、uh, sharing the information, sharing the ideas, sharing the experience, with the diversify the characters. So, the new business collaboration is also a key part of the element. To achieve the accomplishment of the privacy by design. So, this is the, my presentation, and thank you for listening、um, to 
uh, this uh, my own sharing the information. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Kohei san, uh, uh, for the presentation. And uh, it was really nice to hear hear about the privacy by design. And I really appreciated your your approach uh, uh, also to the different cultures and very much the cultural background, remembering that in the end, uh, the changes in the business landscape are all about people uh, um, at the end, people and, and, and their cultures and looking at history sometimes helps quite a bit to understand uh, uh, um, how the society is, uh, is working. Um, uh, I'm dying to, to have a few, few connections uh, uh, that, that are coming onto my mind, but I would like to thank, first of all, uh, uh, um, uh, everybody who uh, put some, uh, some chat comments. Um, and there was, in particular, um, some questions about... Um, about how do we make this happen worldwide as you are bringing out the cultures? How do you see the role of United Nations? Uh, uh, should there really be like a United Nations declaration relating to, to, to data protection and such? Or is it up to the governments, individual governments to do it? Uh, uh, do you have a perspective on this? Yeah, thank you for the comments. Uh, I think the United Nations is a key part of the stakeholders uh, on my presentation, I recommend that the stakeholders making is uh, very critical to achieve the privacy by design. Uh, so international organization is taking this element as well, such as OECD. Uh, it's been an uh, underwriting of the guideline in 1980, which has been a very influential to the local governments to create the privacy regulations. So the United Nations has a different aspects, such as you know, human rights or fundamental rights. And privacy is not just one of them. Uh, just to be the imagine of the like um, the, the some kind of the informations or abusive or any other kind of the human rights should be protected. Uh, but the privacy regulation is you know, like uh, defining the privacy. So privacy is a one aspect, but the other aspect should be inclusive. So the United Nations has taken this role with a different aspect uh, into the conversations. So uh, yeah, I think the international organization has taken this step and to be collaborative, uh, to create a more enhancing of our business conversation. Thank you, thank you. And uh, indeed, thank you for mentioning OECD uh, um, as well. Uh, probably we also as a community should be more engaged with OECD. Unfortunately, we, we were able to contact their, their persons a little bit, uh, little bit late. Um, uh, I would like to mention, just based on what, uh, what you were discussing, uh, uh, um, that, uh, uh, for example, the smart city cases, uh, uh, there are some similar cases going on. Uh, so I welcome to join both the smart city session now after this session, uh, and then actually there is one one later on on the human friendly privacy policies, which I think is interestingly quite similar to uh, uh, to the case uh, case that you are doing. Uh, and then with with regards to the star case, um, I did see some commenting that uh, that star should be uh, uh, or we should try to engage star into the uh, my data operators. Uh, uh, group. The, the my data operators are personal data intermediaries, and it uh, it seems like there was a there was a good collaboration there. And one more note from the audience was that indeed there is uh, a good interaction with United Nations, uh, uh, particularly with UNICEF, uh, and there is also some friends from uh, uh, from UNICEF and our My Data for Children group coming up uh, up in the afternoon. I'm still curious, uh, uh, um, like, how do we really, uh, you know, you said we need to go from that uh, win-lose to win-win. Uh, and I think we have, that is understood that in principle, we need to go from a win-lose to win-win. Uh, but I think what we have struggled with as a whole is how to make that really happen. Uh, so I'm curious on, 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 on what's, uh, what's your, your um, aspect there. Yeah, I think it's in a challenge because we were working on the principle of the 
uh, takes winner takes all the approach and you know, all the fundamentals such as the financing, um, business structures, all the sticking it to the winner takes all, right? I think it's evidence the big company is taking the dispositions and gaining of the highly priced and the stock value. So this is the great evidence. However, it's a time to consider whether it's been a sustainable or not. Sustainable is a very key part of the elements for the data economy. Uh, it's a very similar to uh, the environment industry. They are trying to change their mindset to become a sustainable. Of course, they know that it's, it's not easy, but they try to invest to the new technologies or new actions. So this is a very important. I think uh, it's women, we will be experiencing the same things in the digital data economy as well. Please imagine to concentrate of the data. Is there any safety actually right now? So this is a very big problem. Then sometimes we feel it's not any criminal actions uh, or any abusive to just to sharing your data to the enforcers. So this is a very um, terrible. So from the sustainable perspective, we need to reconsider whether this kind of the business practice is been sustainable or not. It's a time to discuss. Of course, we have a good part. We not take so because of very robust infrastructures. We can use the internet like this. But the problem is we continuously using this system in next decades. So the blockchain is a good example. A lot of people get exciting to decentralize things. Of course, we know that it's not a perfect, but they believe this is the one of the good choice for them in the next decades. So I think it's a good time to consider whether this today's internet model is been sustainable in the future. So this is a uh, uh, my answers to achieve the goal of the win-win approach. Thank you, thank you. Maybe one more question that uh, it seems many people were eager to know. Um, so, how big is uh, self-sovereignty identity in Japan? How is that movement uh, going on right now? You know, there is, of course, uh, discussion on that right now, uh, and some people very active on that uh, that uh, uh, in the my data community. What, what does the Japanese landscape look like? Thank you. Um, maybe there is just some of the key parts in our country. So I'm a little bit ashamed that I'm a representative of this kind of the questions. But from my understanding is that self-sovereign is very important uh, to protect your fundamental rights. So there is just some of the conversations, how we can achieve this goal. But the challenges for us is self-sovereign meaning. Uh, in our country is we sometimes is rely on the specific party as on the mentions on my presentations. They try to seek the reliable. That's a fast actions. Uh, the good things to move right now in our country is try to provide the national identity card to each, all of the citizens in Japan right now. It's just in almost half people is received this card right now, the using for the public services. The problem is whether this is self-sovereign or not. To some people is using this card to control your own data because this data is located on the local server. It is not being controlled by the government. The government is said we need to make a scrutiny, but actually the government is said like that. So the self-sovereign is a very important concept, but I think it takes some time to change our mindset. As I mentioned on the presentation, the mindset change is very important, but we become aware our identity should be controlled by ourselves right now. So the Japan is the one of the country is becoming leading this uh, environment. So I believe this should be penetrated in our country in the next decades. Thank you, thank you, uh, thank you for that. And indeed, that is one topic that is uh, uh, very relevant in uh, in our community as well. Now we are running out of time, uh, so it is time for me to uh, uh, to thank you uh, and to hope that we can collaborate uh, in the future as well. Good luck with your uh, your event. Also, perhaps we find some ways to uh, 
uh, uh, to do some some linkages or collaborations there. Um, we have a time for a few minutes break. We are starting at the uh, top of the hour, uh, and the sessions actually kind of nicely bridging from uh, uh, this presentation. So we have a session on use cases in smart cities uh, and a session on the EU Data Act, the Data Governance Act and personal data intermediaries. And of course, very many uh, um, other interesting things to follow. Please make sure to network, check out the booths, uh, connect with people, uh, but please also remember to have, uh, have some food and drink uh, to last us throughout the day. Uh, thank you very much, Kohei Kurihara, for, for joining us for this session. And uh, I hope you can also join and have a look, look around. Thank you very much uh, uh, once again. Thank you for having.